main text is Luke chapter 9. Praise God. Amen. This is part four in our series entitled Power and Authority. And we're on this series right now and in this time in our life and world is because God is looking for His people to be channels of His power and authority. And that's you and me. But to be channels, you got to know about it and know how to use it. Amen? Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Then He called His twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. And He sent them to preach or proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. The word power here means God's miracle working power. It's the ability, the strength, and might of His Spirit. The word authority here means the delegated right to exercise God's power. That's strong in itself right there. As disciples, He's given that to us. If you notice, the Lord said He gave power and authority to His disciples for a main purpose, to do the works. And the works included running off demons. Now see, we could break that down into all kinds of avenues. Someone wants to be free from an addiction. Well, you cast the devil out. And don't be shy to do that, because, you know, casting the devil out has a bad rap. We're not talking about the the demon-possessed man in the Bible, a crazy guy. But if someone is controlled, being controlled by an addiction, that is an oppression to obsession of, of a demon. And you and I have power to get rid of it. And then when you do, that person senses something totally different. We're not talking about being possessed of the devil. You can cast those out too, but generally speaking, you don't run into the, to the, that kind of person. You see, any kind of attack on a person is oppression, period. Mm-hmm. That's the devil. Yep. But then once you start yielding to things, then it gets to an obsession, And now you're really having a devil problem right there. And you want to get rid of it. Well, God gave the power and authority to His disciples. If you notice, it said, over all demons. That's just not the the easy ones, the hard ones that Jesus had to do. No, all of them. And if you think you can do the easy ones and He only does the hard ones, you're really missing it because you can't do nothing. He's doing the easy and the hard in you and through you. Amen. You know, it's funny how people talk sometimes. Well, I, I think I think uh, I can get rid of that, you know, that, that mild demon, but this is, God's going to have to deal with that one. You can't do nothing. <laughs> but over all demons, and to cure diseases. I never get tired of hearing that. To cure. Cure diseases. That's anything that anybody has that the world says there's no cure to. Oh, there is. Where is it? Yeah, we find it right there in Luke 9, 1 and 2. We found the cure. Praise God. He sent them to preach or proclaim the kingdom of God. Proclaiming the kingdom is speaking the word so God can manifest the kingdom in this world. And that's in... Every area of, of your life. All this is all these these four little categories apply to everything, and to heal the sick. That could be any kind of sickness. You got the power and the authority to heal. Amen. Amen. But if you don't believe you do, since you do. 
you have to hear it more so you can have that sense inside. When I pray for people, I'm expecting instant healing. Well, if you don't always get it, I don't, I'm not thinking that way. I'm doing my part. What if they don't get it instantly? Well, there's a lot of things involved. And I'm not going to go into all of it. But, you know, who knows where their faith is at? Who knows how much doubt they've got going on? Who knows how much they've been religiously confused? There's so much stuff. But God didn't say to qualify it all. Just lay hands on the sick and get the mess out of them and let God deal with the rest of it. Amen? It's real easy to be, like I said before, the hands layer owner. See, my wife can talk that way, and I've got I to gotta figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hands layer I forgot it again. Hands layer owner. Hands layer owner. It takes a while to mess up English, Robin. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> Oh, let God do the healing. (laughs) Praise God. Oh, my. But notice here who God gave the power and authority to. He gave it to his disciples. He didn't say he gave it to his believers. Aren't disciples believers? Absolutely. But a lot of believers aren't disciples. And if you want God to use you, you've got to go from the believing stage to being the disciple. You have to do that. What's the difference? A believer is a convert of Christ, headed to heaven. But if you don't pursue God more down here, he's not going to see much of heaven down here. A disciple is a follower of Christ. John 8, 31, Jesus said to those Jews that believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. What if I don't continue in the word? You'll be a believer. God loves everybody. All he wants you to say is, I confess Jesus Lord. All he wants you to do is turn to him. He wants you to go to heaven. But he wants you to have a whole lot more of the good life down here before you go there, and that takes being a disciple. It takes being a hearer of the Word and a doer of the Word. I don't have that much time to hear it through the week. You do. You do. Check yourself. Check yourself. You know, you got the, you got the radio playing on the way to work. You know, you got your favorite tunes going on. Oh, I'll put on a message. Well, I don't know that's going to pump me up. If you believe in the anointing and the Word of God, you'll probably uh, not play music as much. Amen. And sometimes, like, like yesterday, it rained all day delivering. And that, that's a mental job. I was driving in the rain all day, and I got in this, this mode, like, oh, let's just get this done. I'm thinking, Norman... Turn on a preacher and jerk the slack out of yourself. Because I was just getting in that driving mode. No, I'm not going to waste my time in there. Turned them on, got fired up. I could have turned on some music. That kind of, it, it would pump me up, but not like, not like anointed word. You know, there's anointed me, uh, music, but it's just something about the word that just, just changes everything. And got me out of that slump because I had a long ways to go. and It's not uh, near as easy on Friday in the rain when everybody wants to do 40 and a 55. (laughs) Can I get a witness? (laughs) Uh, I I was on a lot of them yesterday, but that was one of them. You better turn on the Word because you're going to get complaining and complaining ain't going to do any good. You're supposed to be representing Jesus, not riding their bumper, praise the Lord. (laughs) And if you drive like a a nut, don't have a bumper sticker on your back bumper saying, I love Jesus, how about you? Don't have that if you're going to drive like a nut. It's just not a good witness, amen? (laughs) What? Yeah, I'm not driving. Let me. (laughs) 
Sometimes you'd like them to know, too. I tell you what. <laughs> oh, my. A disciple follows in the footsteps of Jesus in all he does and in all he says. And I just saw that just then. If a disciple is following in the footsteps of Jesus, he's always walking in the presence, isn't he? I just saw that. Just following in the footsteps. You know, footsteps don't stay. Even in the sand, it don't stay that long. you got to be real close, don't you? Oh, that's good. That's good. And doing everything He does and saying everything He says. That's, that's what Jesus did. Jesus said in John five nineteen that He only did what He saw His Father do. Jesus said in John twelve forty nine and 50 that He only said what He heard His Father say. This is how He followed the Father and we're to follow the Son the same way. That's being a disciple. Watching Him. Listening to Him. Staying in His steps. Well, that's good. We're to do what He does. We're to say what He says. And as we do this, we'll do the works by letting Him work through us. Because you can't do the works on your own. You have no power in you and you. But you have all power, you and Him, letting Him come through you. Praise God. Turn, if you would, to John chapter 14. Go a little deeper in this. John chapter 14, verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us or enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. I'm going to read that one more time. He who has seen me, he looked at Philip and said, He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? This is God's will for us too, family. And not just at church. When people see us, they should see Jesus. And in seeing Jesus, they'll see the Father. That's everywhere. That's just not Saturday night at 6. Appreciate that, amen. <laughs> that, that, that's a 3 o'clock in the afternoon at Walmart. Can I get a witness? <laughs> I got a grunt. Can I get a witness? <laughs> I mean, grunt is leading to the amen. But... Uh, you want them to see Jesus. Well, I'll show them Jesus if they quit showing me the devil. No, no, no. There's not a qual. There's not a qualifying on it. Amen. We laugh about it all the time, but how are they going to see Jesus if they don't see Jesus in you? There's some people that'll never be in church this lifetime. And you think, well, you know, when they come here, they'll see Jesus. Well, they're never going to come here unless they see Him out there. And they see Jesus and you come here. Amen. Right. Amen. Show them Jesus. That's what being His body is all about. What does Jesus look like? He's God's Word manifested. That's strong right there. In the beginning was the Word... The Word was with God. The Word was God. John 1.1 1, 1. Jesus, when He walked this planet, He was the walking Word of God. Well, John 14.20 says, Jesus said, I'm in my Father. You're in me and I'm in you. Well, we're in Him. And Jesus went up, sent His Spirit down, so what does that make us? The walking 
Word of God. That's powerful right there. That's where all the power is. That's where all the authority is. We're to be living epistles, which is a letter, like the little books in the New Testament, known and read by all men. And you know they are reading you, aren't they? I can say one thing that don't sound perfectly lined up with man's religion at the car lot and somebody say, I thought you were a Christian. Oh, they're watching, aren't they? All the time. Because people are going to try to get under your skin. You ever had anybody do that? You ever had somebody on that last nerve and doing a tap dance? You ever been there, Mark? A couple of times. A couple, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Scott, you ever been there? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 3, verse 2 and 3, it says, You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you're an epistle of Christ or a letter of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not on tables of stone, but on tables of flesh, that is, of the heart. We're written by the Spirit of God. Do you want God to write your life out? Yes. It's up to you. Strong, isn't it? It's up to you. But it's not always in the good time that the, that the book is going so well. It's when you get challenged with the persecution. Be light in the darkness. I've talked to so many people just this week that they're so upset because of what somebody said. And every one of them I said, do you value that person's opinion that highly? And everybody said, no. I said, so why you let it get to you? If their opinion doesn't mean anything to you. You're not basing your life or your identity on what they think of you. You're basing your life and identity on who you are in Christ. It don't matter what they call you, does it? Not one bit. But you have to, you have to know this stuff to identify with Christ or you'll just go with that persecution and persecute back. No, that's not Jesus. Walk in love. I've been especially in the jail, cussed out and all kinds of stuff. But you know what? People's opinion didn't mean nothing to me. I just kept on going, praise God. God. Did it hurt your flesh? Well, absolutely. I got flesh just like you. But I know to go with Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're God's living letters written by His Spirit, which is being a living witness of God. And being a witness is not only what we say, but who we are. We're the walking Word of God. That means we're the Word made flesh, right? John 1.14 The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We're the body of Christ. You put all this stuff together, it changes your view of who you are. The walking Word. The Word may flesh. And the more you say what He says, the more you do what He does, the stronger that anointing on you becomes, uh, the stronger the authority is when you speak, and the stronger the power is when you release the words for the power to come. But you've got to see who you are. You are Jesus to this world. The walking Word of God, the Word made flesh. That's why Jesus was so strong, because He was a Son of Man when He walked the earth. He relinquished Himself of His Son of God abilities and became a man. Well, how did He get so strong? Because He kept identifying with the Father. Now, we need to keep identifying with the Son. You know He had opportunities. He felt everything we felt. That's what it says in Hebrews. But he decided to go with the Father. 
You've got to decide to go with the Son. Well, when do I do that? Before you open your mouth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know where you're headed when the mouth opens. <laughs> well, no, but it could be going up instead of down, sweetheart. <laughs> You know, pause a minute. And you can talk to God under your breath. God, what do I say? And you don't have to say it loud. I'm saying it to y'all to hear me. What do I say? He'll give, you, he'll give you the word. I've done that many a times. Like, wow, that had to be God. That's not what I was going to say. <laughs> Verse 10, we're still in John 14. Verse 10. Do you not believe that I'm in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Or King James says, He does the works. Verse 11, Believe me that I'm in my Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. The works is God's power and authority manifested. Everywhere that Jesus went, power and authority manifested. Everywhere He went, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. What did He do every day? He went about doing good. In that good, what did he do? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's what I said earlier. Sickness is an oppression. For God was with them. But if you study out his walk in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that said he healed all. But when when he went to his hometown of Nazareth, he didn't heal them all. Was there a contradiction? There is zero contradiction in the Bible. If you think there's a contradiction in the Bible, you just found a spot in the Word that you do not understand. There's no contradiction in the Bible. It all flows together. So why couldn't He heal them? Because it said He couldn't do any mighty works because they're unbelief. See, there's other things at the other end. I mean, He wanted His hometown people healed. But they didn't want it. He still went about healing all. So when you put it all together, healing all that wanted it. Ain't that something? Mm. In these verses I'm reading right now, Jesus is telling us how He did the works and how we can do them. So how did He do them? If you notice in these verses, Jesus said, I didn't speak of myself or do anything of myself. It's the Father in me. He does the works. He does it. Big lesson. You can't do it. (laughs) Big relief too, isn't it? He does the works. Praise God. That's what Jesus said in John 5, 19. Again, he said, the Son can do nothing of himself. This is where a lot of people don't understand the Word. They, back to religion. Well, Jesus is the Son of God. He walked as the Son of Man. How could Jesus, the Son of God, say the Son can do nothing of himself? No, he can only say that as a Son of Man. This is where people miss it all the time. John 5, 30, he said, I can of myself do nothing. He relied totally on the Father to do the works. Well, how do we do it? We rely totally on the Son to do the works. He relied on the Father to come through Him to do it. Now we rely on the Son to come through us and do it. The Son does the work through us by His Spirit. This makes this real easy. We just got to get our head out of the way. Because our first thought is, you know, you're at work and you're about to pray for somebody and you know what you hear. What if I blank on this? What if this just don't take? 
uh, what happened to chapter and verse, and why is your head on that all, all that unbelief? Yeah, exactly. Get back to chapter and verse. Just be the hands layer owner. There you go. <laughs> Just be the hands layer owner. And let God do it. Praise God. Okay, Brother Chris, help me. Let's just go, go through that, and there's, there's not an instant, okay? You just tell them you got it by faith, and thank the Lord until you see it and feel it. That's all you do. You're just giving them a little bit more time to line their faith up and get out of their doubt. And I would tell them, get online, listen to the Word, and get your faith built up. I say that all the time, but I'm really saying, run the doubt off. The doubt's in the way, because you've got the faith of the Son of God. Praise God. So how do we do it? By relying on the Son to do it through us. By letting Jesus speak and work through us by His Spirit. Verse 13 and 14 John, John 14, it says, And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, when you see the word ask here in these two verses, it's not a petition. It's not... Asking God, would you do this? If you look it up in the Greek, it means require. It means demand, which implies command. Changes everything right there. It's, the Greek is required, which means demand, which implies command. And if you, if you do a word study on that, you'll see that the word demand and require is different places with the same Greek word. And just, I'm not spending the next 15 minutes breaking it down that far. I'm just telling you this is what it says. But whatever we demand or command in Jesus' name, Jesus said He will make sure it's done. Isn't that good? Let's look at that again. That was... Verse 14, if you ask, if you demand, require, command anything in my name, I will do it. What's the qualifications? I don't see that in there. He'll just do it. If you do want a qualification, it has to be based on His Word. Lord, I'm going to go rob this liquor store right now. And I ask you for wisdom to get in and out and get the most money I can. Really? (laughs) As disciples, we have His authority to demand His power released. And when we command His power release, He said He will do it. Everybody listen to me. We're not telling... God, what to do? This church won't think that. But you hear it online, you're thinking, who does this preacher think he is telling God what to do? I'm not telling God what to do. Well, so what are you doing? I'm releasing his words that he wants spoken so he can do it. Amen. That is really big right there. Yep. I'm not telling God what to do. He said if you will require it, demand it, command it, he said he'll do it. But if you don't require it, demand it, command it, he can't do it. He moves on his word. Praise God. Wow. We're not telling God what to do. We're releasing his word that he wants spoken so he can do it. We're coming back to... John 14, but jump over to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 9 says, God has highly exalted Jesus and given Him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Or you could say every knee should submit of those in heaven, 
of those on earth, of those under the earth. And every tongue or voice should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus' name is above every name. That's just not a person's name. No no matter what is attacking you, sickness is a name. Stress is a name. Confusion's a name. Depression's a name. Lack's a name. All those are names. And my Bible told me that Jesus' name is above every name. Are you hearing the power in that? Whatever the attack is, it will try to make you bow to it. Have you noticed that? (laughs) It will try to make you submit to its name. I'm telling you, look at, you got to start looking at these attacks this way. Oh, I got a pain in my shoulder. Pain's a name. It's trying to get me to bow to that, isn't it? Trying to get me to submit. Well, no. I'm living by the name of Jesus. His name's above that name. You see how, see how things are turned around right there? Don't bow to its name. You got to get in the faith fight and refuse to submit to it. You got to stand in Jesus' name and sickness will bow to his name. Amen. Verse 11 again. Every tongue or voice should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Does sickness have a voice? Yes. I appreciate that. Amen. Pain have a voice? How about it's the end of the month and you don't know how to don't have enough money to pay your bills? Is that talking to you? Boy, is it talking to you. All these names have a voice, don't they? <laughs> They're talking to you. For one purpose, to try to lord over you. Oh, that's good. Don't let it lord over you. You remain standing in the name of Jesus and His Lordship will win out. What Lordship are you going to submit to? What Lordship are you going to bow to? The voice of sickness must confess to the Lordship of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, what does that sound like? If the voice of sickness confesses to the Lordship of Jesus, what does that sound like? It sounds like the voice of health. Ain't that good? Why? Because the Lordship of Jesus produces health. So when pain's coming on you, trying to lord over you, don't let it cause you to bow to its lordship. You stay submitted to Jesus' lordship, and you take the pain out in Jesus' name. The power's in the name. The authority's in the name. His name is above every name. But you're not, you're not exempt from other names coming your way to try to gain lordship. Thank you. It's real easy to say all this right now. But when the pain hits, you have to apply it. You've got to apply it. And I'm not making light about that a bit. You can come up to me afterward and say, I got this pain. I'm fired up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear into that like it's World War III. You're not keeping it. But I come up to me and say, I'm in pain. It's another story. 
You ever notice that? <laughs> it's just another story. Well, I'm not going to let it be another story in my life. Oh, what if I come against it and it's lingering? You need to pull out your Deuteronomy 28 verse 59 that says that prolonged sickness of any kind, disease or dis-ease of any kind is under the curse of the law. And Galatians 3.13 says Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law and I'm not taking this prolonged mess. Get out of my body. Amen. That's what you got to do. Well, I never heard that. Well, we just did a 13-part series, and you never heard that? Don't, don't speak up. <laughs> That's what that whole series was about. You have to apply it. It's one thing to hear chapter and verse spoken to you in practical application. But boy, it's another thing to apply it. But when you start doing it, victory sweet. And the things that have been prolonged in your life, chronic, our, our word now, chronic in your life, uh, no longer. Amen. No longer. Amen. How can you say that? Because Deuteronomy 28, verse 59, tells me I don't have to have it. That's God's word. God gave me His word. Son, daughter, you don't have to have this. Go ahead and get rid of it. How, Father? In the name of Jesus that I left with you. Use that name. It's above the name of prolonged chronic sickness. Amen. Oh, you need to hear this over and over and over and over and over. I mean constantly. It's all in the name. <laughs> Praise God. It's all in the name. Boy, that's good. Back to John 14. Verse 12 says, Most assuredly I say unto you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Well, I've been telling us how we do the works right now. But he says, Greater works than these will he do because I go to my Father. How are we going to do the greater works? The same way we do the works. We use the name. The authorities in the name. It's no different. When Jesus walked the earth, He identified with the Father and let the Father do the works through Him. Jesus went up. Holy Spirit came down. Now, Jesus is still walking the earth. He is the walking Word of God right now in His body. 1 Corinthians twelve twenty seven. We are the body. Amen? Amen? So now He does the works. And the greater works through His body. The way He did it through His body back then. We get our heads so messed up. Because right away we're looking to... He's saying, I'm going to do the works. And I'm going to do the greater works. Uh, you're missing it completely because you're still looking at you. You and you can't do nothing. And every time you and you, you stay in you and you, you're not going nowhere. You got to get out of you and you and get in you and him and let him do it through you. Amen. And don't tell me to repeat that. But get to that but that's what you got to do. If you just got a revelation that you're the body of Christ, what did Christ's body do 2000 years ago? You got Matthew, Mark, Luke and John to see his whole walk. Even at the very end, when the soldiers came to get him, he was still in total control. They, they, he said, who are you looking for? I said, Jesus. He said, I, I'm he. They all fall backwards. <laughs> oh, they're really in control, aren't they? The whole battalion fell backwards. Even in completing his mission that only he could complete, he did it in total control, not letting the devil control nothing until he yielded. So we don't let the devil control any area of our, of our lives at all. Amen. Boy, is that strong. Can I really be that way? When you really believe you're the body of Christ. 
when you really believe your hands is His hands, your feet is His feet, your voice is His voice. Yes, you can. The Father sent His Son to do the works. Now the Son sends us to do the works. The ministry is still going. Why didn't He just stay down here and do it? Because He wanted to go up to put His Spirit in millions of people all over the world to do it. You know, if Jesus stayed here, the works would have got greater and greater and greater. But it was all in just a, one area. There's Christians all over the world now. And in the last year and a half, it's amazing how so many have come out of the woodwork Amen. and saying, we're standing for what it rightfully ours. For the country that God gave us, and our country took God, and He's not going to let this country go to the devil. They're standing left and right now. Praise God. In John 20, verse 21, Jesus said, As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. That messed up your head right there. Realize the Father sent the, sent the Son to pay the penalty for sin to bring about redemption. That was His sole job. We're not sent to do that. But we're sent to carry out the work that that accomplished. And He showed how the, how the work was played out in His walk before the cross, because he, he did it all in faith, didn't he? And we, we're to carry it out the same way, because he sent us the same way the Father sent him. In closing, go to Isaiah 54, if you would, please. Isaiah 54. Verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. That's enough right there to shout. Amen. And every tongue, every voice, that would be voice of pain, wouldn't it? Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, it's judging you. It's passing sentence on you, condemning you. You've got to have this. Right. This says, you shall condemn it. You judge it. Amen. You condemn it. You sentence it. I don't have to take this. How can you say that? Because Jesus took it on the cross, so I don't have to take it. Amen. I'm not taking it. i got the name of Jesus. And that name is above the name of pain, the name of sickness, the name of COVID, the name of whatever it is. It's above. I don't have to have it. But notice you had to do something. What do you got to do? You got to condemn it. You can't go to God and say, God, why would you let this happen? You're completely going the wrong direction right then. You blame God just then. You know that, right? <laughs> okay, you all messed up. If you ever do that, call me and just say, Pastor Chris, my theology is really screwed up. Fix it, would you? Okay, I'll fix it for you. Tell me what you said. I'll get it fixed real quick. That's one thing I never did, no matter how bad my life was all my life. I never blamed God. I was bothered so much in my 20s. One day I, looked, I said to God, I said, God, I don't understand this. I know it's not your fault. And I don't think I'll ever understand this. I know I'm going to heaven. And I thank you when I get there to explain it to me. I was just upset, mad, but I still wasn't blaming Him. I would never blame God. Don't ever do that. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn, because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Any weapon that the devil attacks you with has a voice. Sickness, stress, pain, whatever the problem is, it has a voice. Don't listen to it. Condemn it. Shut it down. 
with the power and authority in the name of Jesus, with the power and authority that Christ Jesus gave you, and expect it to come to pass. Uh, don't forget the expectations. Mark eleven twenty three says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, you're speaking to the problem, you're speaking to the pain. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed. Get out of here. Be cast into the sea. I throw you out of here. And don't doubt in his heart. But believe that the things which he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he said. One of the most powerful verses in the Bible. That's why the world and religious world has criticized people that walk by faith. And that just said you have what you say. And then right away, they say, oh, you, you must be with that name it, claim it bunch. Grab it, blab it bunch. Uh, who wrote Mark eleven twenty three? Was that Kenneth Copeland? Kenneth Hagin? Was that Jerry Savelle, Charles Capps? Who was it that wrote it? Jesus. Do you know whose name you're bashing when you're saying that kind of stuff? It'd be best not to bash. Thank you, dear. I'm trying to be nice. Kelly said it'd be best to shut up. (laughs) You're not ridiculing us. We believe it. But you're definitely stopping the power of God in your life. When you confess Jesus as Lord, you better believe that you have what you say. Think about it. It's time to command it, the problem, the mountain to go in Jesus' name. Cast it out, according to Mark eleven twenty three, 23, and Christ will bring to pass what you said. Get anything out of that tonight? Amen.